Hello and welcome back to our boreal city using the beautiful meandering river map. In the last episode we got the city started with a very basic road layout and we've got some city surfaces going on here. I used a special pattern for my residential zone and I'm using this pattern to put an emphasis on pedestrian pathways in between our homes so people will be more prone to walking. I also started on this industrial area, which is having some issues at the moment, and we'll need to address that in this episode. So, let's start building. I'm starting this episode off by creating our city's first major park. I really like the parks that came with the hotels and resorts CLC, and this one has a lovely pond, which I think is a nice feature. I also create a small city park district beside it to expand on this park's appearance and make this entire block look like one big park. I'm also focusing a little bit more on detailing throughout this series and I play on console so I don't have mods or a workshop to help, but there are some decorative assets that come with the game and I think they're pretty nice. So I'm using um, this little hedge here and I think I do add in some, um, some little flowers. I decided to name the park Chelsea Arboretum. Um, I used inspiration from a real life park that's behind our house. It's an arboretum that was part of a city beautification project and it has a trail that connects to a larger trail in a different neighborhood. Um, and I just love it. We use it for walking, jogging, cycling, and that's my inspiration for this little park. Right now, this first residential neighborhood is called Green Park, but eventually it will be renamed to Chelsea. This will be our main residential hub, and this will be um, our basically our main uh, residential zone for the city, at least starting out. So I'm gonna stop talking now. I'll come back and I'll see you in a few minutes.
So this is the result of what we created with this park so far and I'll add in some more assets to this like a cafe and a gazebo um, later on but so far I think it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to work on sprucing up these two little interchanges that I've created and I'm going to do this by adding some foliage and some trees and some fencing. I've sped the video up four times for this part so you weren't too bored watching this but um, the fencing was probably the most uh, problematic part of this and um, it took me a few different tries to get it right one side it would work perfectly and then the other side would give me problems so <laughs> I just do the same thing uh, for each of these interchanges and I believe I end up using the zoo fencing so um, so you can see here how problematic it is for me <laughs> but it actually turned out pretty well I um, you know it is a little tedious uh, placing down all these bushes and trees and stuff but it it turned out pretty well so I'm pretty happy with it Now I'm going to work on adding some more details to our residential area and I'm going to start on adding a new expansion to this residential zone by using the pattern that I've set up. Uh, but first, before I get into that, I'm placing down an elder care facility, which I think looks pretty nice. and. Um, and I'm going to start recreating the neighborhood pattern. So I don't really know how I came up with this pattern. It just kind of happened this way and I ended up really liking it. But basically it's making these um, sort of large blocks, but then in the middle having the smaller uh, shorter block. <laughs> I, I wish I had the dimensions for you, but you can see in the video uh, what the pattern is. And then you just repeat that on the other side. And so um, the main reason for doing this is because I really want everything to be really intentional and precise. And I've seen a lot of other YouTube creators out there and they create these really precise cities and everything looks like really orderly and um, symmetrical. And so that's what I'm trying to do with this pattern. So um, next up, I'm going to add in some surfaces and a little bit of low density commercial to this new addition to uh, our residential zone. And we also will hit our busy town milestone very soon. So that will be at 5,000 people. I also create a campus for an Institute of Creative Arts, which I believe I end up renaming. I, I just view those as like, a private school <laughs> for for our kids so um but at that point i'll come back and i'll talk about that so stay tuned
All right, so we are back in our residential zone and I've added in a new public library and I think this is going to be a regular thing where I add in a library beside or very close to a school and I think it really adds to the look of it being a campus. So the Institute of Creative Arts honestly is not my favorite education asset. It just seems really bulky to me. And I know a lot of the assets are bulky, <laughs> but once I put in the skate park and the little basketball courts, I really liked how it turned out. And I also added this pathway, this kind of like reddish pathway, which I think is from the amusement parks. Um, I think it's the amusement parks path from the Parks Life DLC, but it just, it looks like the same color as like a track and field uh, track to me it it looks very similar so I think all of this red really works together from the red of the school to the red of the path the skate park has a little bit of red in it and then the basketball courts I think it all works out 
really well so I'm really happy with how this this turned out so next up uh, I'm just gonna be kind of adding a little more to this residential zone I'm also going to be adding in some more commercial and working a little bit on our industrial area. Um, but I wanted to remind you, if you like this video, of course, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more City Skylines content. I do only vanilla because I play on console, so no mods, but I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. So stick around because we still have a lot more left to do in this episode. Now, as our city is growing, I'm beginning to think about transit, and I always begin with buses. So right now, I'm starting a potential road layout for a bus depot, and for the most part, I usually use the biofuel bus depot just to reduce pollution and noise pollution. And I don't show it in this episode. It may be the next episode, but this actually turns out to be uh, a little transit hub for my inner city bus station. And where those one-way roads are, that's where my local buses will pick people up and drop them off. I don't think we get to that here in this episode, but you can see how I've started this little road layout. Next up, I'm going to start on our very first hotel for the city and I create a nice little plaza for it. I'm still getting used to the hotels and resorts DLC, so I'm not super confident in placement of hotels yet, but I really like what I ended up with. I also add in a cafe and some other little details to the park that I started earlier in this episode. We're almost done with this episode, so stick around. I do have a couple more things I want to show you, and then I'll say goodbye.
We're back in our residential zone and I'm going to end the episode off with adding a little soccer field and gymnasium next to our high school. So this is the original high school, the very first high school that we created for this city. And I just love how it looks by adding in these sports arenas and sports fields to create a high school campus. So. I'm going to end the episode off with some cinematics of what we've done today, but I just want to take a moment to say thank you for joining me and for sticking around and watching this episode. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.